not often in sport do you have somebody that has as long of a career as he's had, has been able to be healthy, stay out of trouble, compete at an extremely high level, and influence the amount of people that he has. It's diet, it's sleep, it's recovery. You know, training is just one part of it, so you have to dedicate your life to it. You gotta be all in. You know, if you're not all in, then you're never gonna make it to the top. Noah's probably been the most personable, high-level athlete and consistent athlete in the game. For one week in the year, you have to be perfect, and he's done that. Noah has been perfect across the regionals format. He was perfect across the sanctionals formats, and he's been perfect across the semifinals formats, which is, you know, very hard to do. Kind of the dream, right? To be able to be that good for 10 years, that's pretty incredible. He's competed on a stage in front of hundreds of thousands of people. He's won awards that speak to his performance, but also to his heart. And so I think he's had a really unique experience competing in CrossFit. It's been beautiful to watch. You look at Noah and you watch his body language and, and how he you know, portrays himself and it is a true definition of what the CrossFit community is all about. And it's about getting behind each other and supporting each other through those challenging moments. He's somebody that for the rest of his life and the rest of like CrossFit as a sport, he'll be somebody that's talked about. You know, he's not gonna like fade away when he retires. He's had so much influence in CrossFit that like four years to come, they're gonna talk about him. For the last decade of my life, I've competed at the CrossFit Games. My first year was back in 2014. I was only 23 years old. Ever since then, I've continued to compete at the CrossFit Games all the way till now. I'm 32 years old, competing at hopefully my 10th CrossFit Games. A lot has changed in my life, both as a person and as an athlete. You good boy. Good morning, dude. <laughs> Max, can you have a kiss? <laughs> Thank you. I started doing CrossFit back in 2010. I was a sophomore in college at the University of Miami. Got into it completely um, blind to what CrossFit was. I just knew that it was some sort of exercise program, thought it was kind of militant. Was doing it more for aesthetics at the time. Wanted to just get jacked and shredded and eventually realized that it was a sport that I could compete in. A few years later realized that it was something that I could do for a living full time. I mean, I don't know if I have kind of grown with the times and realized that the definition of a man is not somebody that is so stoic and tough and like you can be kind and happy and silly and still be a great and dominant athlete. He just loves so big. Like he loves his friends, he loves his family, he loves what he does every day. He has a really, really, really big heart. Noah's positivity is rooted in realism and it is so at the core of who he is that it brings it, it's a, there's an authenticity to his kindness and positivity that like I don't really think I've ever seen in somebody else. He wants to interact with everybody that he meets. He wants to talk to them. If somebody drops in and wants to work out with him, like, hey, can I hop in on that session? He's like, yeah, come over. Like, how can I help you? You know, he wants to give them tips, corrections. To succeed in the sport, I mean, at a high level, you have to dedicate your whole life to it. I mean, you gotta eat, sleep, breathe, grind, because you have to be good at a hundred different things and then you don't even know what you're gonna have to be doing at the competition. So it's just, 
you got to prepare for the unknown and the unknowable. A lot of people think CrossFit's very high intensity, which it is and can be. But if you're going full blast 100% for every single portion of the day, that's not sustainable. That's, you're going to start to burn out, get injured. So you have to manage and balance the intensity that you give to all the different training pieces. Just the sheer fact of not knowing what you're training for, you could train all year round and you know, it may not even show up in competition and you're faced with something that you've never even done before. Um, and that is the beauty of the sport. That is what we've signed up for. The mental strength that I'm taking into semifinals this year in order to try to qualify for my 10th year at the games is a lot more about being able to do it for my people, for everybody that's been along the journey with me. Never seen him quit, back down, be afraid or timid. I, I would imagine that, you know, there's a lot of anxiety, especially when things are on the line, but he, um, he attacks, you know, he plays offense. He never plays defense. It has to be your whole life. Everything has to be dedicated around it. You have to execute perfectly, you know, like you have to keep your head on your shoulders the whole weekend. Like those weekends are really tough, not just physically, but mentally. It almost feels like this is the most important one of them all, because if I don't qualify this year, then I missed out on that opportunity that no one has ever had before to qualify 10 times in a row. So it definitely feels like there's a lot of pressure to try to finish inside of the qualifying position this year. Just making it once is pretty insane, you know, coming from, you know, someone like me who's been trying to make it for, you know, a decade, and then he's about to make it 10 years consecutively in a row. Um, to be the first person to do it, I think that's unbelievable, and I don't know if we'll ever see it again. There is a part of me that feels like I accomplished the goal and I can just kind of like ride it out and just have the games be like a celebration of being there for the 10th time in a row. But there's also another part of me that wants to give it my all because it is kind of my last opportunity to try to win the games. I want to go all in and make sure that I don't have any regrets. We love to compete. We love to showcase to the world all of our hard work and, you know, his consistency, but his entertainment on the floor far exceeds anyone else. We've gotten to travel the world together and compete against the best in the world. I've gotten to celebrate him performing at a super high level and he's got to do the same. Like those bonds are, are really special. And I think getting to share them with somebody is something that's going to make this, this whole thing, um, a memory that will stick with me for a smile. Legacy is like truly to strive to be the best version of yourself, to be the champion, while also enjoying the journey and uh, building friendships and memories along the way. I think those struggles are kind of what define us and I've gone through a lot of them over the years and this year I want to make sure that no matter what I go through I'm able to come out of the other side grateful 
for everything that I've had happen up until this point. I would just love to express like my gratitude for everybody that has been on the journey with me. You guys, the Gymshark team, all the fans, my family and friends that have kind of been along for the ride. They've made this whole thing worth it for me. I think that if I had qualified for the games 10 years in a row and didn't have any of them along for the ride with me, it wouldn't have felt anywhere near as fulfilling. So I'm glad that I get to do it with everybody that's doing it with me.